Hello, I'm Mike Russell from musicradiocreative.com. In this mini-series, I'm going to guide you through some of the best features in the preferences menus of Adobe Audition. Many of you have been asking me for this series, so I'm going to take you through every setting you ever need to know to get the most out of Adobe Audition. If you really like what I'm doing, hit like on this video right now. Also, remember to subscribe, and if you never want to miss a weekly video that I release, hit the bell button as well. So the preferences menu can be seen as quite boring in Adobe Audition, but very necessary to make sure everything functions correctly. And I wanted to walk you through in a series of videos what all of these options do. But let's start in this video with preferences general, as there are so many general things, and I don't think many people actually ever touch any of these settings. But if you wanted to know what they all do, here is the definitive answer. So first of all, we'll start at the top with zoom factor time. Well, this is exactly how much your cursor zooms in and out when you use the scroll wheel on the timeline bar. So 33% is quite acceptable. If I put it up to 100% and click OK and start zooming in and out on this, you'll see very, very fast it goes in and out of my audio file there. Back into preferences, a shortcut to do that, by the way, on both PC and Mac is hit control and the comma button on your keyboard. Uh, if we put it down to 2%, really, really tiny, click OK. Now I try to scroll in with my scroll well, you see, whoa, it's such a tiny, small zoom. Uh, so again, back into preferences general, 33% is about where you want to leave it. Allow context sensitive channel editing. Okay, this is really handy, particularly if you've used old versions of Audition or Cool Edit Pro in the past. This ticked and clicking OK on a stereo file means you can go right to the top here and work only on the left channel or right to the bottom here and work only on the right channel or in the middle and of course select both channels. With that option switched off, you cannot do that. You can only work on one channel. So if you do a lot of stereo work from time to time, you might want to enable that feature. Let's go back in and look at show HUD for selection ranges only. HUD, what is that? It's this volume control up here. By default, it shows all the time wherever you are in your waveform. The HUD, the heads up display is always there and allows you to change, increase, decrease volume just like that. But sometimes you don't want it there. It's quite annoying. So general preferences, general, and you want to show HUD for selection ranges only. Click OK. It disappears. Whenever you select something, the HUD appears only at that point. So that's quite good to know. Synchronize selection, zoom level, and playhead across files in the waveform editor. Wow, that sounds complicated. It's not that bad, though. Tick it on. And you might want to use this if you do a lot of work with uh, multi-stems or stemmed audio. If you're working with music and you're trying to copy or paste uh, the same part of a track. See here, I'm zoomed right out and I'm selecting around the 20 second mark here in this track. I also happen to have another audio file open. And when I go there, you'll see it's zoomed out and I'm selected around the same area. And if I make this selection bigger like so and go back, you'll see the selection is bigger in this track. So if you're working with stems, it can be an excellent thing to have ticked. Otherwise, untick it. Enable extensions. Well, this simply enables any third party extensions you've installed in Adobe Audition. Let me give you an example. If I go into the window menu and look for my extensions, I've got the awesome beat edit installed and I can use that. You can also install extensions from the Adobe extension store, the app store, and, uh, and it's all third party stuff. If you don't want any third party stuff, best disable this in your general preferences. Click OK and you'll notice now a window. Ah, extensions. Uh, there is beat edit there. And it seems to still allow it for the moment. But of course, with many of these things, if you actually reboot Audition, it will then disable those extensions. Use hardware acceleration for drawing. Again, a restart is required for this one. Generally, leave that ticked. Don't mess with that. It's going to use your computer's hardware to do all the cool graphics rendering and Audition. Unless you're having sincere problems with your graphics and things aren't displaying properly, you want to leave that ticked. If things are not working so well for you, untick it. Or if memory is a problem, untick it. But generally, leave that ticked. Now we move on to the exciting boxes down here. Default fade curve type. Linear logarithmic is really what you want. Cosine is different. Let me show you how this affects things. And let's actually go into the multi-track to do this. Now in multi-track, you can make crossfades. As you can see, I've done here two different crossfades. By default, if I edit and I fade one track over the other, you get this nice 
even curve. But if I go into my preferences and say I want the cosine S curve instead, now when I do a crossfade in multi-track, I get this kind of S-y kind of curve, uh, which is just slightly different, as you can see from the examples I did earlier. But again, for most people, you'll want to leave that for default. Click OK back into the waveform view and we'll look again now we've got editor panel context clicking uh, so context menu use shift and click to extend selection so what it's saying is if i right click i get the context menu in editor like that i'm right clicking getting that if i'm selecting i'm getting a selection if i hit shift i can extend the selection on either side like that let go of shift and it just lets go of the selection so that's default behavior however if i change this over to extend selection and control for context menu you'll notice that i can select something then i can right click to the right and extend right click to the left and extend and no context menu no context menu whatsoever if i need a context menu i hit control or command on mac and I get my context menu back. But again, by default, generally, I leave this as is. It really depends what you're happy working with. Spectral circular brush clicking. Create a circular selection on mouse down or place the playhead on mouse down. Generally, you want to leave this as place the playhead on mouse down. Uh, hold for a circular selection. So that's default behavior. And this is in our spectral view here, up here, or Shift and D to access spectral. So if I select now, it's just going to move the cursor around. But if I select and hold, there's my selection. Okay. If I go and change this behavior to create a circular selection on mouse down, immediately the moment I mouse down, it's starting to select things, okay? So that's worth to bear in mind depending on the behavior, but generally place the playhead on mouse down is what you want. Finally, or penultimate I should say, mouse wheel zoom. Zoom at mouse position. Hold control over timeline to zoom at playhead. Okay, so basically what this means is when I zoom on a track, it will zoom to wherever I am on the time bar up here using my scroll wheel on my mouse. However, if I want to zoom to the playhead, I can hold down control or command and it will always zoom to my playhead. I can reverse this behavior by simply changing this over, clicking OK. And now where, wherever I click on the timeline, it's always going to zoom to my playhead. And if I hold down control, it will then zoom to the place where my cursor is on the playhead. Let's put that back. Click OK. And the final thing to show you is reset all one warning dialogues inside general. And what this will do, if you've ever had a warning dialogue in Audition, like when you save an MP3 file and it says, this is a lossy file format, uh, never show this again. It will never show it again. But if you reset, then those dialog boxes will appear. This can be quite handy. Sometimes Audition asks you for default behavior when you're doing things, like, for instance, dragging stuff into the multi-track. Uh, let me give you a quick example. Let's zoom right out. Uh, delete all of this. If I go ahead and try and pull in two files, it'll try and pull them onto the same uh, track. Now, I really want them to go on different tracks, and there is a dialog box that asks me how I want this behavior to be. If I wanted to change that, reset all warning dialogs, click yes, click OK, and now try and drag these in, and it will do that, but it'll come up with what do you want to do and I'll say place each file onto its own track. So if I ever made a mistake and I wanted to uh, reconfirm a different behavior, I can then change that just in the general part of the preferences menu by resetting all my warning dialogues. But then everything's reset, so you have to then say, don't show this again in the future for any warning dialogues you do not want to appear. And that is general section of preferences in a nutshell. Like I say, subscribe to my channel because I'll be going through the rest of the preferences menu. There are so many of them that you can tweak and customize to make Audition really perform at its best. And if you want to learn more about Adobe Audition, I'd love it if you join me on my course. Enrollment is open now. I have many courses for audio producers, podcast producers, live streamers as well, all at mrc.fm forward slash learn. That's mrc.fm forward slash learn. Any questions at all, let me know in the comments down below. Music Radio Pro